two scientists struggle with finding romantic lives. One of them discovers a mysterious potion which soon changes their luck with love. A group of men go out one night to a house at 34th and Vine to get their friend Paul's fortune read by a gypsy palm reader named Madame Ruth. After spitting on and scrutinizing Paul's hand, the gypsy remarks on his abysmal luck with women. Adding insult to injury, she takes a Polaroid photo of the man's palm to show to her sister. When the gypsy foresees no woman ever getting with him, the man's face falls. She then opens a closet full of mysterious bottles and vials and retrieves a large potion bottle designated number 8. Madame Ruth instructs the man to swallow the potion diluted in water, which will then allow him to attract women whenever he speaks. He scoffs, stating he is a biochemist, but the gypsy extracts a small sample of the liquid and hands it to him, assuring the man he'll be back. Later at a restaurant, Paul's friends ask him if he has any romantic interest in a female co-worker they saw him with. Paul lies by saying she's not his type, but inwardly admits that Diane, his colleague, is exactly his type. Meanwhile, Diane, a comparative psychobiologist, describes her work observing primates' behavior to a group of female friends. She explains how certain experiments can stimulate sexual feelings in the male subjects via electrodes in their brains. One of the women correctly deduces the results of the experiment, claiming she knows men all too well. In the meantime, the timid biochemist Paul is encouraged by his friends to approach and talk to an attractive woman in a red top. He refuses at first, but when one of the guys bribe him with $100, he relents and walks nervously towards the bar. He works up the courage to talk to the woman, only to discover that she has a mean, condescending personality. She insults Paul's profession, his clothing style, and his car to illustrate how they wouldn't really fit together. As he goes to leave in embarrassment, the woman promises to sleep with him if he can tell her the brand of her designer top. Paul admits to not knowing, and she shoes him away. Later that night, a police officer gives Diane a traffic violation ticket while driving home. She tries to plead her case by citing her faulty car, but the cop tickets her anyway, obviously judging her by her appearance. Diane and Paul arrive in their respective homes, each exhibiting similarities such as their taste for classical music. While cleaning up the mess his cat made, Paul sees the gypsy's wrapped liquid sample fall out of his coat, but he throws it in the trash. Diane, on the other hand, flips through romantic movies on the TV before settling on a philosophy book by Jean-Paul Sartre. As Paul reads a book by the same author, one of his friends calls to tell him they have a gift for him. The gift then arrives in the form of a woman named Marissa knocking on Paul's door, hired to provide him a good time. Later, Diane wakes up to a call from a man named Gary, asking if he can come over. The man later shows up at her door, and the two make awkward conversation for a bit, seemingly being old acquaintances. They soon end up in bed, but Gary immediately leaves after the deed while commenting on Diane's weight. Meanwhile, Marissa eyes on Paul's expensive-looking stereo equipment while he goes to get drinks. After sneaking off to the bathroom to raid the medicine closet, Marissa leaves the house, telling her companion about Paul's stereo. Hours later, Paul's cat spills the contents of the trash bin again, licking a bit of the portion off the paper that Paul threw away earlier. The cat then jumps on a windowsill and meows, the sound alerting all other cats in the neighborhood. Paul stops channel surfing to investigate the cat noises coming from somewhere in his house. He stumbles into the living room to find dozens of cats inside and crowding around his pet. The next day at work, Paul shows Diane a sample of the potion, describing how it might have affected the cat's behavior, which wore off four hours later. He relates it to the gypsy's claims of the potion being able to stimulate attraction via verbal sounds. The two end up testing the potion on a female chimp, which then lets out a sound. Paul and Diane are shocked when the male chimp, Romeo, breaks through the wall and tries to get it on with a female chimp. Before Diane can sedate the excited Romeo, the chimp falls asleep on a table. Soon, Paul and Diane conduct extensive testing of the potion on the chimps. They discover the scientific process behind its effects, which elicits attraction from the opposite gender and hostility from the same gender. The potion is too powerful on its own, hence requiring dilution in water, and the effects only last four hours. At a loss on how to progress with human testing, Paul suggests to Diane that they test the potion themselves in real-world scenarios. She agrees, and he divides what's left of the potion between them while not speaking to each other for three weeks. That night, the same police officer issues a ticket to Diane again, only this time she decides to use the potion using a mouth spray. Just by clearing her throat, the officer lets Diane's violation go and even asks her out for a drink, which she refuses with glee. When Diane arrives home, she finds out her car insurance has been cancelled, so she visits the insurance company the following day with a plan to use the potion. However, her contact person turns out to 
be female, prompting her to find a man she can affect. Diane gets directed to the supervisor's office by charming a male employee. The supervisor, Mr. Webster, reverses the insurance cancellation with an infatuated smile after speaking with Diane. Upon exiting the building, a newly confident Diane excuses herself after bumping into a wealthy-looking man, who stares after her. After catching her staring at a necklace display in a store, the man continues to follow Diane while proclaiming his love for her. He pursues her to her parking spot, offering her the expensive necklace from the store, but she refuses. The man, Enrico Pazzoli, notices her beat-up vehicle and reveals he owns the company that manufactures such cars. This prompts Diane to take the necklace as her car is stuck in ignition. A captivated Enrico then talks her into accompanying him to a party that evening. Later at her apartment, Diane meets Enrico at the door but finds out that the party calls for formal wear, which she doesn't have. He then takes her to an upscale boutique to solve her problem. At the party, women flock around royal personality Prince Jeffrey. Diane arrives in a fancy gown, accompanied by Enrico. She soon attracts a crowd of men while explaining scientific topics, but her laugh eventually catches the attention of the prince. After Enrico takes her home, Diane savors the lavish attention she's receiving. Meanwhile, Paul dresses up and uses the potion-laced mouth spray before leaving his place. He goes back to the restaurant where he finds the haughty woman in the bar and whispers to her ear. The potion works its magic, as the woman named Cheryl instantly possesses a flirty attitude. Recognizing his chance, Paul plays around with Cheryl's advances until he gets a passionate kiss from her. She becomes increasingly aggressive to the point of unbuckling his pants and inviting him to her place. Paul, however, gets revenge by asking her a scientific question she is unable to answer, and he leaves her at the bar. Celebrating his newfound virility, Paul continues his research by testing it on different women in different situations. He notes that the potion is 100% effective, enabling him to reshape his social status. One day, he maximizes his opportunities by going to a college sorority house and getting it on with all the girls there. He doesn't regret it, even when he gets arrested for being there past 9 p.m. M. One night, Diane's friend with benefits, Gary, attempts to visit her home, which is now surrounded by tight security. He's turned away at the door by a guard, who reveals she's in the company of Jeffrey, Prince of England. The next morning, Diane bails Paul out of jail, but she doesn't speak as she's currently on the potion. He notes Diane's physical makeover, while she silently teases him about having the time of his life at the sorority house. She then gives an awestruck Paul a ride in the Prince's limousine, where Jeffrey himself invites him to a charity auction party. That night at the party, Paul and Diane take a spray of the potion and playfully go their own ways. Diane escorted by the prince. Paul soon attracts a group of women to him, but he and Diane keep finding each other's glances throughout the evening. Eventually, Prince Jeffrey leaves the party with Diane, with Paul trying and failing to catch up to them. Later that night, Paul watches news of the notorious playboy prince's entanglement with Diane, as they quickly become hot gossip material. The next day, Paul and Diane meet at a park, where she informs him that Prince Jeffrey has proposed to her. While she hasn't given a definite answer, the prospect seems to excite Diane who's frustrated at going four years without a date. Paul reminds her that they went on a lunch date some time ago, but she doesn't count it as one. He then mentions Diane's boyfriend she brought up before, but she also dismisses it as not being a real relationship. Paul recognizes his chance and asks Diane out on a proper date, to which she happily agrees. After a few dates, the two realize their genuine attraction for each other and eventually become a couple. Soon after, Paul makes plans to propose marriage to Diane, buying her a ring and booking a romantic getaway. One day, however, Diane seemingly disappears from Paul's radar, not answering her door or his phone calls. Sometime later, Diane calls Paul and he rushes to her home. There, she inexplicably reveals that she's been seeing someone else, who turns out to be Gary standing smugly in her living room. Devastated and confused, Paul notices a strange snake ring with a gleaming red jewel on Gary's pinky, before leaving Diane's house. Paul spends a few days wallowing in despair, but he regroups and hatches a plan to sabotage Diane's relationship with Gary. He then meets Diane pretending to be okay as friends while digging up dirt on his rival. While strolling through a park one day, Paul asks Diane about what makes Gary so great, but she merely gives vague praise. Paul is alarmed when Diane lets slip that Gary somehow sometimes makes her do things she doesn't like. Suddenly, Gary calls his girlfriend over the phone. After a tense conversation with Gary, Diane tells Paul that they can't see each other anymore. Paul notes that Gary's strange and powerful influence over Diane causes her to possess a cult-like devotion. Later that day, Marissa almost gets caught lockpicking Paul's apartment door when Paul arrives to find her there. Oblivious, he invites her inside where she asks to use the bathroom 
again. Marissa raids the medicine cabinet again, but this time finds and unwittingly uses the potion spray and subjects Paul to its magic. As a result, Paul gives away his valuables, including all his potion samples and knowledge of how it works to Marissa and her accomplice. Four hours later, the effect wears off of Paul and he realizes how his experience felt similar to Diane's own behavior. That night, Paul visits Madame Ruth and discovers that a man with a golden snake ring bought the entire bottle of potion. Immediately after, he calls Diane on a payphone and reveals that Gary has been using the love potion on her. Paul adds that by calling Diane every four hours on her cell, Gary ensures she's under the influence constantly. Abruptly, Gary interrupts the call, telling her to drop the phone. Paul also gleans from her halting responses that Gary found out about the potion through her journal. Over the next few days, Paul unsuccessfully tries to make Diane realize the truth through calls and letters. When he confronts Gary at his workplace, Paul is kicked out. Desperate, he returns to Madame Ruth and asks if there was any antidote to the potion. She retrieves another bottle from her cabinet, which she calls Love Potion 9. This particular potion supposedly doesn't create emotions, but rather purifies them, leaving only true, genuine love. The downside, however, is if they take number 9 with Diane not feeling the same way as Paul, she will hate him for the rest of her life. Later on, Paul explains to his friends how number 9 works, which entails him and Diane drinking from the same cup of the potion and kiss after. They then have to wait 5 minutes and a song from the breeze will indicate success, while the taste of mule sweat means failure. Assuming that Diane truly loves Paul, Gary would not be able to sway her back no matter the amount of number 8 used. Paul then describes a terrible plan to force Diane to take the potion before his heavily skeptical friends. Just then, Marissa shows up at the door and charms her way into acquiring more of number 8. She finds out that Gary has the rest of the potion and leaves Paul and his friends under the potion's influence. Four hours and several missing valuables later, the guys are convinced of Paul's story and agree to help him. Afterward, the group make their way to Diane's apartment, but only finds a female friend of hers there. The woman suspects something fishy with Diane, especially with how quickly she skipped between guys and is suddenly marrying Gary in a few hours. Paul fills her in on everything about the potions and his plan as they leave for the wedding. At the wedding party, the friend manages to trick Diane into drinking from a glass with potion number 9 in it. However, Gary suddenly shows up, drinks from the same glass, and kisses Diane. Then, Paul calls Madame Ruth, who assures him that Diane will only fall for the one she truly loves. She also bids him to hurry, as the number 9 will not work if he waits too long. Soon after, Paul evades Marissa loitering with his friends, bursts through a door and drinks from the glass with potion number 9. Gary then grabs Paul before he can kiss Diane, and escorts him out of the venue. Marissa appears behind Gary and charms him into retrieving the rest of number 8 for her. Gary also accidentally charms Marissa, who falls in love with him and they kiss. Due to number 9's effects, however, Gary recovers and leaves Marissa behind to return to the wedding. Desperate, Marissa downs the last of the pure, undiluted number 8, unaware of its power. She then sneaks into the wedding hall filled with guests and coughs loudly, putting everyone under the spell. Chaos ensues as the men pursue Marissa with zombie-like determination. Meanwhile, Paul is restrained in a police station just as the police clear out the premises to respond to an emergency. Paul takes a peek and sees an avalanche of men hounding a screaming Marissa through the streets. As she scrambles inside the police station, Paul protects himself by plugging his ears and screaming gibberish. He breaks free, drives back to the wedding venue in a borrowed car, dashes all the way to the hall, and kisses Diane. She still goes to hug Gary, but Paul knocks him down with a well-aimed punch. He then goes outside anxiously waiting for five minutes to pass. Back on the city streets, Marissa discovers just how much control she has over the battalion of men pursuing her. Meanwhile, Paul hears a song-like sound in the wind, but there's no sign of Diane showing up. Turns out it takes six minutes, and soon enough, Diane comes running into his arms. They kiss and leave together in happiness as Madame Ruth watches from her crystal ball. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.